Good evening, everybody. Brian Newbert here from GoldenBlack.com. If you don't believe me, this is your rap video following Purdue's 75 to 65 win over Michigan State. It was brought to you by our friends at um, the Purdue Union Club Hotel, the newly reinvented Purdue Union Club Hotel. As I've urged you during all of these rap videos this season, please keep them in mind next time you plan a trip to campus. Uh, you will not be sorry. Uh, I'm sitting here concourse in Mackey. I, again, I want to re reiterate, I am adhering to all um, necessary safety protocols here. Don't think I'm flouting the rules here by sitting here doing this. Um, Purdue 75, Michigan State 65. Trevion Williams is pretty good. You know, he has become that guy. Uh, he's become almost that best case scenario uh, player for Purdue that Purdue hoped he would be this season. Uh, you know, from a consistency perspective, from a reliability perspective, from a steadiness perspective. Now, I'm around behind the scenes far less uh, than I've ever been uh, because of pandemic. Um, but everything I can tell from the vantage point I have in this unique year, he is all of those things I just mentioned. He's steady. He's consistent. He's doing the right things more than ever, it seems like. He's trying to be a leader. Uh, he's wanting the ball. He is... He is uh, Everything you want in like an alpha foundational type player, your best player, um, he has been that. And that, again, comes out again today when, you know, Trayvon Williams has just spent his whole college career destroying the state of Michigan. Um, hasn't won all those games, you know, against Michigan, Michigan State, but he's won enough of them and he's put up some pretty robust numbers. And why that is, he whether that's a he went to high school in Michigan thing and he brings a little extra for those games or whether he's just got the weird Ryan Klein tormenting of Penn State gene going on, I, I don't know. But um, he is he has dominated against both Michigan and Michigan State so often. Michigan State, I, I don't – they don't have a good, a good big guy this year. They don't have, you know, a typical Kenny Goins, you know, Nick Ward – go on down the line. The guys whose jerseys don't seem to fit right because they're so big and muscular. Um, but Michigan State doesn't help those guys either when they're overmatched with uh, Trayvon Williams without helping them a little bit systematically. They don't double the post hardly at all. And those guys one-on-one -on -one just can't handle Trayvon Williams. Now, that's what Michigan State did with Isaac Haas too, where they were saying basically let Haas get his – and take away the shooters. Fine, that makes a lot of sense. When you're trying to take away Carson Edwards and Dakota Mathias and Ryan Klein, you know, I don't know if anybody's noticed, Purdue is shooting 31% from three-point range in Big Ten play. I, I, I don't really understand why people wouldn't double the post uh, against Purdue. I know Trayvon Williams is a really good passer, but the guys he's passing to, you know, haven't been shooting the ball really well. So I, I don't really understand why people are guarding Purdue like they're a 45% three-point shooting team when they're not. Anyway, I, I'm not here to, to question other people's coaching. I'm here to tell you about Purdue beating Michigan State. Um, Trayvon Williams was awesome. That, that's basically the story of the game to me. Uh, again, has been everything, you know, Purdue could have wanted from him this season. They'll continue to want more because he can be so good, but... You know, he, he's having a hell of a year. He's coming up big in big moments. I don't know what he's done necessarily in the final five minutes of games, but it seems like every time Purdue goes to him, you know, with that one dubious travel at Minnesota aside, he does something positive, uh, scores or does something else positive, draws a foul, whatever it may be. Um, but beyond Travion Williams, who was clearly the story of the game, Zach Eady plays really well again today. He is really trending upward. Uh, for Purdue here at the right time, too. He is fully acclimated to Big Ten play, I would say. Uh, I thought Michigan State's bigs actually did a decent job getting some space between Purdue's bigs and the rim on defense. They just produced bigs just, you know, they were able to make a couple of long plays. Trayvon Williams made tough shots. Zach Eady was able to follow his own misses at least once. Um, so I don't think Michigan State necessarily did a horrible job guarding those guys under the circumstances, but those circumstances are that those guys one-on-one -on -one have little to no chance against Trayvon Williams and Zach Eady, and they needed help. Uh, but Trayvon Williams and Zach Eady needed help also, and um, pretty awesome segue there, pretty awesome transition. Uh, Eric Hunter and Jaden Ivey uh, provided that help, and uh, you know I think that 
Michigan State's a good half-court team defensively. This is not a particularly good Michigan State team. This is the most atypical Michigan State team um, I can recall. And um, But they are a pretty solid half-court defensive team, especially on your guards. I thought that Purdue uh, you know, needed – this was a little bit like those Ohio State games where Purdue needs somebody who can make a play in the backcourt. And I thought Eric Hunter and Jaden Ivey are both guys – Jaden Ivey is that guy all the time, but Eric Hunter has did that more at Minnesota. He's got a little bit of that to his game, uh, too, and I thought those guys both came up really big today because if Purdue just had to execute offensive plays in the half court against this team when you know, Michigan State's tough to make cuts on, they're tough to make passes against, you know, that would have been tough sledding. But I, I thought that Eric Hunter's ability to break down the defense, get shots for himself, get to the basket, was enormous for Purdue. And Jaden Ivey, you know, the, the term I keep using here tonight is jolt of electricity. That is precisely what he is for Purdue, and that's what he was during that run where he had the dunk, he hit the three off the post kick out from Travion Williams, then he blocks the shot. I'm pointing at stuff that you can't even see, so I don't know why I'm pointing at it. He blocks Joey Hauser right here, take my word for it, goes down the other end, passes to Eric Hunter for the three. I thought that was that, that was the game then and there. I, I thought that was the, the pivotal Mackey Arena run where had there been people in this place, everybody would have lost their minds and the game would have been over. Michigan State rallies back, get it to, back down to one, but every point mattered the rest of the way. That was a really important stretch of basketball in this game. Jaden Ivey was almost you know, exclusively um, the reason for it. He has 11 points. He had, I think, three assists, all of them to Trayvon Williams, if I recall correctly. One turnover, I think, blocks two shots. Leads Purdue in plus minus for him. That's worth. I thought he did a good job defensively in what I saw live. Um, I, I think he played one of his best all around games here against an opponent. It's hard for a guard, a young guard, to play against. Uh, I, I think he, you know, I've said this time and again. I think he's going to be, you know, a great player for Purdue. And I, I don't, I don't see how anybody can be looking at him right now and, and think otherwise because he's got stuff that you just don't, you don't see in players every day. But again, him and him and Eric Hunter, their contributions offensively to this game were enormous. Uh, you know, it'd be a good time for, for for Eric Hunter to you know kind of hit his stride. His he's been a little up and down, you know, this season from a scoring perspective. Not that you know Purdue hasn't been able to win without him necessarily scoring 15 points a game, but you know he, he's not shooting the three as well as you know I think everybody reasonably expected him to. I have no idea what the early season injury had to do with that, but maybe if he's rounding into the form that you know everybody saw from him in the preseason, that he saw from himself, you know now would be a good time for that because Purdue's got a good opportunity here to close the season really strong, you know peak at the right time at the end of the year. Now would be the time to start working toward that. You got a full roster again for however long it takes for some other calamity to you know hit Purdue because it's been that type of season. Stefanovic is gonna presumably get back to what Stefanovic was at some point. How long that takes, I don't know. He's not there yet. But, um, you know, Purdue wins this game against a team that did what you feared, you know, that they bounced back uh, in typical Michigan State fashion from really a humiliating, you know, loss to Iowa. And you always, the worst, the scariest Michigan State team is the, the Michigan State team that, you know, has been embarrassed, has its, you know, proverbial back to the wall, um, back against the wrecking machine, uh, as David Lee Roth would put it. And this Michigan State team is in that position. And that's, again, the scariest Michigan State team ever because Izzo is a, Tom Izzo is, a, is a, the consummate button pusher. And he has a way of getting those guys to froth the mouth uh, when he needs them to do just that. And your worst case scenario here tonight was that you were going to get the absolute best of Michigan State tonight. I don't know if Purdue got the absolute best of Michigan State tonight, but sure as hell didn't get the absolute worst of Michigan State tonight. It got something, you know, very much closer to the best of Michigan State than the worst of Michigan State. And that was, you know, sort of your fear here that they would all of a sudden figure it out because they got embarrassed by Iowa. You know, arches looming, and they did respond well to that loss. And you have to give Purdue a lot of credit for responding competitively to them them getting a, you know, a relatively sound punch from Michigan State, um, but also for Purdue overcoming a bunch of stuff. You know, Purdue, again, doesn't shoot the ball well from three. But they made timely ones, the three by Jaden Ivey, the three by Eric Hunter. Those were big ones. But you're still not shooting the ball like you're capable of uh, if you're Purdue. You can 
shoot a lot better than this. That would give you a little bit more margin for error, you know, to not have to rely on Trayvon Williams to score in the post every freaking time uh, down the floor. Uh, it gives you a little a little leeway to make some free throws, maybe commit a turnover every now and then. As of now, your, your margin is so narrow. And it's the Big Ten in general, where you're going to be playing a lot of, like, 57 to 55 rock fights. This one, you know, being one of them, even though it was 75 to 65. Um, because Purdue made a bunch of free throws there at the end. Um, Purdue's got to, you know, had to be the best form of Purdue Purdue can be. Purdue's got to shoot the ball a hell of a lot better than they're shooting it right now. I like the volume. Uh, tonight they only took 12. Uh, I've never understood why teams that struggle to shoot three shoot so many of them. Uh, Purdue only takes 12 tonight. They only make three. Uh, but it's not like you had six other empty possessions because you shot 18 of them uh, or 20 of them. Um, so I thought Purdue... To its credit, knew where its bread was buttered tonight, so to speak, to use as many food analogies as I guess I can, and that was Trayvon Williams. They didn't. I thought there was a stretch in the first half where they settled for too many threes. Uh, once they started getting the ball back inside to Trayvon Williams, obviously they were rewarded for that. But Purdue is going to have to make more shots than this in order to close this season the way they want to close this season. I thought Purdue could have done a better job rebounding. I think that's maybe more of a credit to Michigan State than it is an indictment of Purdue, but you know, the reason this game was close, one of the reasons this game was close, one of the main reasons this game was so close, let me try that again, was that Michigan State got so many second chance points that the, these centers who aren't nearly as good as Purdue's centers um, had some had some uh, success on the offensive glass. Uh, and uh, some long rebounds went Michigan State's way. Again, I think that's probably more a credit to Michigan State than it is an indictment of Purdue. A few of them also came in the final, the late stretches of the first half when Purdue didn't have a center on the floor uh, because of foul problems. So had Trayvon Williams been out there for some of those offensive rebounds or Zach Eady, maybe they wouldn't have happened. So I think that's important to make mention of. But I do think that there were too many second chance points for Michigan State, uh, 18 of them. It's a lot of points, especially for a team that, you know, struggles to score anyway. Uh, you did a great job, I think, keeping them out of transition. Um, they botched a transition badly, so did Purdue. Uh, but given uh, or them getting, you know, 18 second chance points was what gave Michigan State, really gave Michigan State a chance here. Purdue could have cleaned that up a little bit. So Purdue overcame some stuff here to win this game. Um, but that that's the sign of a maturing team or a team that's mature already is that you can win games when stuff doesn't go your way. And, uh, you know, good for Purdue for, for doing it tonight. So that's what I got from this game. I'm going on and on and on here. Uh, thank you to the Purdue Union Club Hotel, uh, the newly reinvented Purdue Union Club Hotel. Keep them in mind next time you plan a trip to campus. You won't be sorry. Uh, from goldenblack.com, this is Brian Newbert. Thank you for watching. Thank you for reading. Thank you for listening. And thank you for processing our materials. However, as you process our materials, I'll talk to you again Saturday night from my office at home after Purdue plays at Nebraska. It's going to be a hell of a day for me. I'm going to a high school basketball game at 2 o'clock in Indy, and I'm going to try to get back to West Lafayette for the 5.30 p.m. tip-off on TV in Lincoln. So I might be a little bit stressed out when I talk to you on Saturday night, but that'll just make it more fun. Have a good night, everybody.